Father, in Jesus' name, we come before your throne today, thanking you for your wisdom, your knowledge, your understanding imputed to us to teach this message today. Holy Spirit, welcome. Teach your message today in Jesus' name. Satan, there's no place for you. Get out. Get out of God's people. In Jesus' name, we pray. Father God, Jehovah, we love you, Lord. We worship you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Is the Bible true? The odds are one trillion to one that the Bible is true and God breathed. We will study that proof today. For hundreds of years, people have questioned the accuracy and authenticity of a book called the Holy Bible. No other book in the world has ever been the topic of such controversy. Among believers, there are many who are convinced that God inspired the translation of his word, as well as the originals. This group insists that the 1611 King James translation is that inspired work and that every word along with the chapter and verse arrangements are pure and God-breathed. Other believers consider such blind faith in a book written and translated by men as ridiculous or even stupid. They insist that only the originals were pure and inspired. Citing what, in their opinion, are many so-called errors or mistranslations, they commonly go back to the original language, Hebrew or Greek, and they substitute what they personally believe is a better translation. Naturally, with these two extremes among believers, there are also many who fall somewhere in between in their beliefs. Then, of course, there is the unbeliever who says the Bible has been translated too many times and it is full of errors and cannot be relied upon at all. So the debate rages on and will never be completely settled until the final judgment white throne of men, the judgment. Meanwhile, the lost will use the controversy among believers or any other excuse to avoid the Bible and its message of salvation. This lesson today is to help those who are searching for the truth and to prove that the Bible is truly a God-breathed book. It doesn't matter to a person what the Bible says if they don't believe it. Remember that. However, once a person realizes that the Bible is truly God's message to man, then what it says suddenly becomes more important and its power more evident. Hebrews 4.12, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing as under of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. This lesson today is dedicated to our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. It is my hope, it is my hope that once convinced that the Bible is really true, many lost souls will come to Jesus Christ seeking his great gift of salvation. To this end, may those readers who are lost in trespasses and sin have their eyes opened today, have their eyes open to the need, the way, and the urgency for salvation. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Moreover, may it help the weak believer again. May it help the weak believer gain confidence and faith in God's holy book. As faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God, Romans 10:17. May the Holy Spirit 
Open eyes that need to be opened and minister to hearts that need to be filled as the word of God speaks for itself today. Let's start with the Bible. Our Bible is composed of 66 books written by 40 Jewish authors over some 1500 years. The fact that writings by the early authors complement and agree so well with those over a thousand years removed and that hundreds of prophecies were fulfilled exactly as predicted is in itself a miracle. Although we are not debating manuscript evidence or the various Bible versions, it is worth noting that with all the translations available today, the one the Holy Spirit has honored with the greatest amount of fruit is the King James Version. Without controversy, it has been the power behind every major work and revival since 1611. In fact, the greatest period of revival on earth was between 1500 and 1900. This was the period known as the Philadelphia Church Age that God refers to in Revelation 3, 7, and 8. He said about this church, And hath keep my word, and not denied my name. God's every word is important to him and should be important to us. You, as you will learn later in this lesson. Additionally, there are certain characteristics of scripture, composition, and numerical arrangements that totally and completely set this book apart from any other book, any other book or Bible version in the world. The following are only a few of those features and barely scratch the surface of all the proof God has provided that man could never have written or translated the Bible without divine help. Characteristics and scripture used are from the King James Version. It's one of a kind. First of all, this book is unlikely, unlike, listen, first of all, this book is unlike any other book on the face of the earth. It is very unlikely written by man. For example, while there are literally hundreds of translations of the Bible, only one does not have a copyright. Which one? That's right. It's the 1611 King James Bible. Although some editions have copyrights on the subject, index or concordance or maps or margarine or m marginal references, the text itself, the scripture, is not copyrighted. Most Christians don't realize that the new versions were translated from entirely different manuscripts than the King James Version and that each has a copyright date and literally thousands of changes in the text. These are just some things to consider about the Bible. It's indestructible. Voltaire, a French writer and philosopher held the King James Bible up in public and declared, in 100 years this book will be forgotten, eliminated. Ironically, his house became headquarters for the Geneva Bible Society, who started selling Bibles out of his home 100 years to the day after that foolish statement was made. God must have an incredible sense of humor, doesn't he? <clears throat> it's God's book. The King James Version has 31,175 verses. Some scholars say the middle verse is Psalm 118.8. That verse in the King James Version has 14 words. Seven is God's number in the Bible and 14 is a multiple of seven. Since there is no middle word with 14 words, the middle two words are the Lord. If this is true, and it is, the King James Version is likely the only book in the world that has the Lord in the exact middle. All the so-called new Bibles have 20 to 25 verses left out before you even get to the middle. Coincident? Not likely. Prophecies make it 
different. Listen, the Bible contains hundreds of prophecies and over 300 have already come true exactly like the Bible, exactly like the book said it would. Knowing that, would you bet against the next one? Of these prophecies, 48 were based on the birth, life, death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Some mathematicians have calculated that the odds of those 48 being fulfilled in the life of any one person given the fact that there were millions on earth, then were one trillion to one. There's not another book in the world that can match this phenomenon of prophecy. What do you do with that kind of book? How about believe it, love it, study it, live by it, and teach it to others? God wrote it, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. That's 2 Peter 1.21. God gave it a special place. Psalms 138.2 I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. Listen. Above all thy name. That's Psalm 138.2 a pretty lofty place for a book, wouldn't you say? If God thought it was that important, wouldn't he provide an accurate translation for us today? He did, and here it is. Its words are correct. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. That's Proverbs 36. We are told not to add to God's word because it's correct the way it is. If you add to it, you are a liar. Therefore, the religious committees who changed and added to the text are found to be liars by the scripture itself. Not by me, not by you, but by the word of God. Beginning to get interesting to you, huh? Well, let's go on. Did you know there were up to 64,000 words removed and some 1,500 words changed in the new versions. We'll study this later. We will get to it, believe me. The matter is settled. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Psalms 119.89. It's settled. It's pure. His word is pure. The words of the Lord are pure words as silver tried in a furnace of earth purified seven times. That's Psalms 12, 6. How could anything, listen, how could anything be any more pure than that which God has purified? Would God say it was pure and then not give us a pure translation from cover to cover? God is not a man that he should lie, Numbers 23, 19. But we all know that man is the expert at lying. Man has always tried to set himself up as a higher authority than God with his own version of the scripture. Which of the two would you rather trust? The one God wrote or the one man wrote? It's scientifically perfect. Man's science has been changing for thousands of years. The science books that you were taught from in school have been changed. Have you noticed? Likely several times they've been changed, depending on your age. Over and over again, we find examples of God's word running from 1,000 to 2,000 years ahead of man's science. For example, man's science said the earth was flat in 1492. But interestingly enough, approximately 1,900 years earlier, Isaiah 40, 21, and 22 revealed the earth was round. Have ye not known? Have ye not heard? Have it not been told you from the beginning? Have ye not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth. The word for circle is spear, which means round like a ball. 
The Bible was right and man was wrong. Another good verse on this subject is Luke 17, 31 through 34, which pictures a rapture taking place and it was both day and night at the same time. This further indicates the earth is round because the sun can only shine on one side at a time. Less than 100 years ago, scientists said that the Bible was wrong in 2 Peter 3.10 because science knew nothing about melt an element. Nothing could melt an element, in other words. Let me say that again. Less than 100 years ago, scientists said the Bible was wrong in 2 Peter 3.10 because science knew nothing could melt an element. And then the A-bomb was invented. Man was wrong. Then the H-bomb. Again, man was wrong. Man's knowledge is foolishness compared to God's word. That's 1 Corinthians 3.19. Again, early science said something had to hold the earth up in space. But Job 26.7 states, he, stretch, he stretches out the north over the empty place and hangeth the earth upon nothing. How did Job, the oldest book in the Bible, happen to have that information? Coincidence? Luck? You decide for yourself. The oldest book in the Bible also revealed in Job 25, 5 that the moon does not shine. Therefore, we know it has no light of its own, but rather reflects light from the sun. If you are a Christian, you also should reflect the light of the sun the Lord Jesus Christ because he is the only light you have. Also as the moon follows the sun across the sky east to west, you should likewise follow Jesus Christ. Behold, even to the moon and it shineth not, yea, the stars are not pure in his sight. Revealing, isn't it? Job 37, 7, he sealeth up the hand of every man that all men may know his work there are your hand and fingerprints sealed up and different from anyone else's. This revelation was thousands of years before man discovered it. Job 38, 16, Hast thou entered into the springs of the sea, or hast thou walked in the search of the depth? Man discovered fresh water springs in the sea in 1850. Job 38, 19, where is the way where light dwelleth? And as for darkness, where is the place thereof? The way where light moves, it travels and has a way that it goes. Job 38, 22, hast thou entered into the treasures of the snow or hast thou seen the treasures of the hail? An acre of snow, two inches thick, has eight or nine dollars worth of fertilizer and chemicals in it. Listen, Job thirty-eight, thirty-five. Canst thou send lightning that they may go and say unto thee, Here we are. How can lightning, electricity go, travel and speak? Here we are. Try your telephone. It uses electricity. Job thirty-eight, thirty-two. Canst thou bring forth Mazareth in his season or Canst thou guide Acturus with his sons? How about that? Acturus is a runaway star system that moves at about 257 miles a second. That is about 20 times as fast as our sun moves. Mazareth in this scripture is the compilation of the uh, what do you call it? Uh, horoscopes, the the uh, Pisces and, and Aries and all of that uh, stuff. So there you have eight references. Listen, eight references from the Bible, oldest book giving, the oldest book Job giving information long before man's science worked it out. How did the writer of Job know those things? Smart man? Obviously, he was smart enough to listen well when God spoke, since he could not have known these things on his own.
Here are some more examples. Ecclesiastes 1.6 was written around 977 BC. It states, The wind goeth toward the south and turneth about unto the north. It whirleth about continually, and the wind returneth again according to his circuits. How did the writer know in 977 BC that the wind actually traveled in circuits and patterns when man's science just figured it out in the last hundred years or so? Just another lucky guess, huh? Look at verse 7. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full unto the place from whence the rivers come, thither they return again. This is an obvious, listen, this is an obvious description of the water cycle. Water evaporates up and then comes back down in the form of rain, sleet, or snow to the rivers and streams, and then back to the ocean, up, back, down, up, back, down, on and on, etc., and so on. This knowledge was available in the Bible almost 2,000 years before man figured it out. Leviticus 15.13 was 30 centuries ahead of medical science when it said, To bathe his flesh is running water. Bathe his flesh in running water and shall be clean. Leviticus 15:13 bathe his flesh in running water and shall be clean until the turn of the century people including doctors and nurses were still washing hands and arms in a community bowl before doctoring or operating the results were infectious gangrene loss of limb and often death Nahum 2:4 the chariots shall rage in the streets, they shall jostle one against another in the broad ways. They shall seem like torches. They shall run like the lightning. These vehicles are running into one another in the streets. They shall seem like torches and run like lightning. Certainly, certainly these are not horse-drawn chariots, but more likely a reference to the future in modern-day cars and trucks. Listen. Match this verse with Isaiah 9, 5. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood, but this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. Confused noise and fuel of fire. That is good description of a combustible engine and ignition system, maybe in tanks and armored personnel carriers. Garments rolled in blood, like body bags used in Desert Storm or some other battle? Is all this beginning to form a pattern in your mind yet? Hopefully by now you are convinced that the Bible could not have been written by man alone and that God was the real and God is the real author. This being the case, it follows that God would provide us a perfect translation so Christians could have the final authority in all matters of faith and practice. Listen, many believe the original manuscripts are the only perfect word of God. However, the originals have never been found. Consequently, they are of no importance today. However, those seeking further assurance may be interested in certain findings that surround the manuscript copies our Bible was translated from. Obviously, if they are pure, our God-honored translation has more credibility. Is this not true? Think about that for a minute. Many believe the original manuscripts are the only perfect word of God. However, the originals have never been found. Consequently, they are of no importance today. However, those seeking further assurance may be interested in certain findings that surround the manuscript copies our Bible was translated from. Obviously, if they are pure, our God, if they are pure, our God-honored translation has more credibility. Some powerful evidence here. Ivan Panin was a Russian immigrant and devoted atheist 
and a devoted atheist who had a miraculous conversion to Christ. This conversion was brought about after Pennon discovered the amazing mathematical structure of the Bible. Pennon was a Harvard graduate, one of the ten top mathematicians in the United States, spoke seven languages fluently and knew as many as fourteen. With this knowledge and background, Pannon began to study the scriptures in the original languages and made some startling discoveries. The Bible was written primarily in Hebrew and Greek. These are two languages that do not have a number system, but instead use letters of their alphabets to represent numbers. Pannon began to experiment by replacing the letters of scriptures with their corresponding numbers. Being a mathem mathematical genius, he immediately began to see a definite mathematical pattern. This excited Pannon, and as he studied more, he began to realize that the pattern was too elaborate for chance or even for the unaided human mind to construct the Bible without divine guidance. This discovery became the turning point for him, and subsequently, subsequently his entire life was devoted to the study and research of Bible numerics. Over 40,000 sheets of studies were submitted as undisputed evidence that the Bible was a supernatural product far beyond the ability of man to construct. A recipient of, a recipient of his studies, the Nobel Research Foundation concurred with Pennon's conclusion stating, we find the evidence overwhelmingly in favor of such a statement. Challenges were issued for anyone to show evidence refuting his studies. Refuting his studies. No one had came forward. Even rewards were offered, but no one has ever been able to do so. A small example of what he found follows. Patterns of prime numbers were found, such as 7, 11, 13, 17, and 23. Sevens especially were found in clusters. Take, for example, the first sentence of the Bible. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In Hebrew, that sentence is exactly seven words. Seven is called God's number because God does things in seven all through the Bible. Those seven words have exactly 28 four times seven letters. There are three nouns, God, heaven, and earth. Taking the letters of these, substituting their number equivalents, and adding them up, you get a combined total of 777, 111 times seven. There is one Hebrew verb, its total numeral, numerical, excuse me, its total numerical value is 203, 29 times 7. The first three words contain the subject which exactly 14, with exactly 14, 2 times 7 letters. The Hebrew words for the two objects, heaven and earth, each have 7 letters. The value of the first, middle, and last letters in the sentence is 133. That's 19 times 7. The numeric value for the first and last words in the sentence is 1393, 199 times 7. The value of the first and last letters of the verse is 497, 71 times 7. The value of the first and last letters of each of the words between is 896, 128 times 7, and on and on. Although there are 30 different features of sevens in this sentence, only 11 are listed here. One scholar said the chance of this numerical arrangement happening by accident is 1 in 33 trillion. Suddenly the Bible takes on a new meaning and importance in face of these odds, don't you agree? There is much more that could 
be given as evidence to prove the Bible is truly God's book. However, it is unlikely that anyone not convinced by now would believe any amount of evidence anyway. The Bible has an answer for blindness in 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Of course, the God of this world mentioned is Satan. Hopefully your eyes were opened at some time in the past and you have already been born again. And what you have read and what you have heard has helped give you more faith in the Bible. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans again, 10, 17. However, if you know you have never been saved or if you are simply not sure, now is the time to make sure. The same Bible that has been so accurate in all its statements and prophecies for so many years also has the solution we all need concerning salvation. The need for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 6.23 The simplicity. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. That's John 3.36. Not by works, for by the grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. That's Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. The way Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's John 14, 6. That if thou confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That is Romans 10, 9, and 10. Listen, the prayer. With a repentant heart, being sorry for your sinful life, being willing to turn from that sin and desiring to change and receive forgiveness, pray this prayer and get it done today. Pray this prayer, dear Father, I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins and that the precious blood he shed on the cross is payment in full for those sins. Believing that, Father, I now receive Jesus Christ in my heart as my personal Savior and I ask you to forgive me for my sins and save my soul from hell. I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.